Hello everybody, welcome to the official replay cast of the Group G a crucial match between Matabolitos and Rio Bravo, round three. We've got Undead for Matabolitos and Dark Elves for Rio Bravo. I can show you the groups here. Um, Nuru, as you can see, has won this group easily. Nine points, seven touchdowns, absolute dominance from him. Uh, Matabolitos and Kraken are tied on three points each. They've both scored the same amount of touchdowns, which is the primary tiebreaker. However, Rio Bravo has conceded two more. So if this is a draw, Matabolitos will qualify. Otherwise, whoever wins, wins, but um, well, qualifies in second place because Nuru is definitely first. Um, so essentially, Matabolitos just playing for the draw here, right, against Elves. Uh, we've got Goblin Chiliers for Rio Bravo. We've got Creek as the coach, so that's two good things. We've also got a, a funky, a funky uh, colour scheme here, but I really like the pink, the pink undead. So you know, good, good kit, good kit selections and stuff here. Nice to see. No, oh, some loners never know who they are. Oh, that wasn't the loners, it was the pro. Oh my god, I literally thought that was said bad habits. Was that like good habits? It was blessed statue. Blessed statue enough. I thought that said bad habits, I swear, that's crazy. That's pretty good, isn't it, getting the pro there for the half. Um, if you look at the teams, we've got a couple of guards. A couple of tackles, that's nice, isn't it, versus Delves. This is a strip ball ghoul, isn't it? And a block ghoul. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the strip ball ghoul. And uh, three dodge blitzers, a block and a wrestle witch, and a leader. Uh, runner is pretty, you know, there's a lot of like standard dark elf builds, isn't there? And I guess this is one of them. I can tell you that Matabolitos is Mexican and qualified through the FNBB qualifier. And Rio Bravo is from Ukraine and qualified through Trident Ball 4, Road to Fame from the Blood Bowl Ukraine League. So there you go. We're going straight in here. I like this. Aggressive. Oh. And he snaked the rush. Well, that's what happens when you uh, try to roll dice. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty brutal. But I liked it, right? I liked it. You know, maybe there were safe moves to be made first. Um, this was like the first thing he did. This guy's in the wrong square, isn't he? So, you know, maybe he could have made some safe moves. Maybe this was overly aggressive, right? Like, you don't have to try and turn him over instantly. Maybe, maybe just blitz the tackler here. Try to isolate. But uh, I guess he stood up in this square, isn't he? So you could just block this one and then blitz this one. But, you know, I don't hate, like, trying to make things happen. But, yeah, may maybe a bit overly aggressive. Um, making the rush to base the ball. Okay, good. Now, now he's in the right square. Okay. <laughs> no, you can't use pro for arguing the call. It wasn't a zombie that got pro, by the way. It was a witch elf, which is uh, which is pretty good to get pro. Wow, we've gone really far forward here. Interesting, isn't it? On the one hand, it's good claiming space. On the other hand, yeah. you disconnected from your mummies and uh, liable to get swamped. No, yeah, sometimes the pro is rubbish. Yeah. Most of the time, it's pretty good. Like, pro is pretty good now, right? Three plus pro is a... 
a lot better than a 4 plus pro turns out So yeah, that, that turn cost him not only the reroll, but also all of this, you know, space claimed by the uh, undead. Maybe you're going to kick the head in of that blitzer as well. Getting to tackle the witch is pretty nice. I guess he's not going to get the foul of Blitzer, is he? The way he's played the rest of it. Ooh, does he re-roll that? Yep. Full pow. Maybe he should have done the relevant block first, and then he could have just not made that hit. Or, like, dodged away if the re-roll had been used for the turn. But, you know, nitpicky. Yeah, running one dice in the pool is really nice as well, yeah. You have endless greed and stuff, yeah. Ooh. Stun's, stun's good, isn't it? It's it kind of gone the wrong... What, what's happened with Rio Bravo here is he thought, right, I've got to win, I'll go crazy turn one. And then he went crazy turn one, and then he's like, oh... oh I've just got to try and screen now. And like, you know, he's screening deep inside of his own half, like... Already, this is as far as like Diamond got in his last game that we just watched, right? Like this is as far as he got before turn eight, basically, and uh, he's just given up all of the space instantly by going for that, you know, backfield harassment. And now he's going to struggle to stop the score unless he gets a ball hit. Mind that was a risky one D. Oh, wow. Oh. You might go for a, a one dice on the ball here, eh? This looks pretty nice to get a one D. Gets him. Oh! oh well, you've got to reroll that. Fails. Oh. And then the witch elf catches it back. Wow. Wow. Well, instant 2D with tackle. So, so, and that perfect scatter for him as well. So that's a bit, uh, a <laughs> bit of an anti-climax. Ooh, both down. No bludger recovery. He's, now he has to foul the witch elf here. What? He realised? Oh my god, that's amazing! He just he moved that in to block him and then realised and fouled. <laughs> that's great. Okay, so yeah, he, like he, funnily enough, he has managed to go back over the last couple of turns. And then Snake there, which now is going to give a huge route through for Matabalitos. Tackle Blitz. It's pretty good having I mean, two tackles, isn't it, to be fair? Like having two, <laughs> that sounds stupid. <laughs> having two is a lot better than having one. <laughs> like, 
Like it sounds stupid, right? If I don't like one, if I don't like one tackle, why would I want two? But well, the thing is, with one tackle, you're relying on it being in the right place every time. But with two, it will it will be in the right place. Like it's much more likely to be in the right place. It's much harder to isolate it. It's, do you know what I mean? Like it just becomes a lot better. A lot better. One is easily marginalised, and two is hard to deal with. <laughs> Yeah, thanks, Caution. But, I mean, the thing is, like, it's not twice as good having two wolves, right? The claw isn't really twice as good having two wolves. Because it's not that easy to make two blocks on orcs every turn. But the tackle... Too, if you've got one tackle, often you're not even going to blitz with it because you're keeping it back in case something happens. But when you've got two, you use it every single turn. And you'll use both more. Okay, we've dodged in for an uphill. I don't know why when he could have just dodged in the back for a, for a 1D, but it's worked. And, uh, this is a little bit tricky, isn't it? Oh, it was pro, wasn't it? The uphill was better because it was pro. So that was that could have been a factor. I mean that's insanely greedy going for an uphill instead of a one D to push direction. But it was pro. Nope, fails the dodge. Okay, so the tackler is on three players. And he blocked him. Oh, okay, I mean, he would have failed the dodge anyway, but, like, don't you just dodge and blitz him? Is surely the correct play there. Wow. I'm still unlucky to uh, dub skull. Powers here, and now we've just got a ghoul pick up score. Add the reroll for it, makes it scores. Wow, Rio Bravo was so close to you know stopping the score. Maybe on the uphills, maybe you know, if you've got a good bounce, he could have got away and got a defensive to score, which have obviously been great, but uh, so close to defending, and then just just failed at the end. Really low chance of a one turn here, isn't there? Honestly, that's I just I realised my decision to go dark elves was maybe a bit bad because of one turn, right? Wood elves have a valid one turn. It's not high percentage like Skaven, but it's completely re possible and reasonable. Whereas dark elf one turn is essentially impossible. The removal, nice. And the tackler stays out as well. Incredible. But yeah, the Dells have got to bang this in. I just think as early as possible, right? Because Mata Bolitos, like you're not in danger of losing because he's still just going to go for the draw. Right? So like, it's not like. Normally you'd want to score on turn 4 or turn 5 to like give the pressure there, drive more, so they take more risks to score quickly. But seeing as um, Mata Politos doesn't have to score at all, then I think just going as quick as possible is fine. Oh, and a surf maybe. I think this is... it's fine, right? But it's only a zombie. And... Uh, could have gone for deeper penetration. Yeah. 
Mm, he does have to be a little bit worried about this ghoul, I guess. Hmm, I think it's better to 2D the mummy, right? Just put him in there and 2D the mummy first. Basically zero penetration that turn. Not ideal. Uh, I'd be a bit hesitant to put the to put the strip ball go there. I'd probably just keep him back as a safety. This is the problem with like one tackler, right? Now now your tackler is there. And so you can just go the other the other side, and then like, you know, occasionally tag him off with a rookie line. Or... Okay, so that's that's somewhat decent pressure getting the other one there. But... Oh, Dub skull. Oh, he's still got the pro, his pro for the whole game. Pro for the whole game. That's that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's actually insane. Wow, I would not like that in a in tabletop blood bowl. Flip me. Oh, lovely four two through. It's poor Blitzer having to eat a mummy shot. Uh, mighty blow is for like a half, isn't it? Or maybe just a drive. I think the mighty blow is just a drive. Has. Mm. That's what you get from marking a mummy. I don't know why he was scared of him like moving three squares, but he was. And he cast him. Oh no, it was the other one, it was the bloodshed that you paced, wasn't it? This one was just not there. Okay. Errata, errata. Oh wow, he rushed to tackle this guy and fail the rush. He's four squares in. He's just gonna hand off and score. score. If only he had two tacklers. Yeah, I guess after you make the uh Handoff without a reroll, then you can make the two rushes to score. Yeah, give yourself an extra turn. So there we go. Rio Bravo in in three. Now will Rio Bravo play an aggressive defence? Unfortunately, he's only got nine players to do it with, so it's going to be difficult. Very difficult. But he's got a reroll advantage and plenty of turns. He doesn't have to go like balls to the wall instantly, right? But he's gonna have to go at some time. Oh wow, Matablee just gets an extra reroll there, that helps. But how does he have pro? Is that is that just a display bug? Is the pro just a display bug? Last until the end of the match? No, pro. Pro last till the end of the match. That is insane. <laughs> that is actually insane. That would that would annoy me at tabletop. 
my opponent getting pro for the whole game. Oh my god. Keat with the knowledge. Gets a pal. Yeah, some are bad for you. Yeah, exactly right. Like, like Elliot's run with the... Uh... Oh, wow, he snaked again. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, this, this Blitz has made two rushes and snaked them both. Yeah, that was funny when uh, Elliot's rant about the press and the It is stupid that some can be actively bad for you. And then some are, like, ridiculously good. Yeah, Fisher's rough. That's different though, right? That's just like kickoff events. I mean, most kickoff events are a bit rubbish, but press and nuffle especially so. Well, he risks the handoff to put it onto a blodger. That's spicy. That is spicy, because I mean, that's adding a one in nine just to lose, but it means the, you know, the hits on your ball or a little bit better, except they're likely to be done by this witch elf because she's got pro. Man, that was a bit, that was very spicy coming in in the four tackle zone, so this was maybe a little bit too aggressive by Rio Bravo. Like, you have to win the turn, you have to win the game, but you don't have to win the game this turn. Every turn, right? You can surf this witch elf now as well, potentially. Nope, double pal. <laughs> of course it's not a surf. Oh man, this is a bit this is a bit dodgy. He's not gonna get yeah, the, the problem with this is it's very easy to get a one D on the ball. And uh Double push. Okay, yeah, right, okay, good. He's blitzed with him. Okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. I mean, in that case, we're definitely just going in with a... The wrestle pro, right? And you just do it first. And this is it. This is your game. Oh no, don't move him. No. No, you had to you had to leave him for recovery. And then you can even pro the uphill. Which is better than the team reroll, isn't it? What was the uphill? Okay, right, he was definitely wrong to use the team reroll, right? He rolled a skull and a power, so he could have just tried to reroll the skull. That has to be better than rerolling the whole thing. Surely. Surely. But now, that witch elf is surfed. The sky's power. I mean, honestly, Matt of Leos has pretty good dice. He's, he's powered pretty much everything he's hit. <laughs> pow, 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 pow. Rio Bravo, Snake, two rushes. Dub Skull, that one day, which, you know, fair enough, didn't have to be one day, but... He's powered this as well. He, he didn't get the surf, though, because he double powered. <laughs> wow. That's... What a... What a crazy turn just powered literally everything and that looks 
That looks pretty much it for Rio Bravo. I mean, he's still going to chuck dice at the situation, isn't he? But... You can dodge this one off to be a scoring threat, and then you've got the tackle attack. So absolutely should have dodged this one first. Oh my god, he rolled the 1D, pal! Why'd you push him there? You have to push him out, right? Oh, he even scattered that way. So if he pushed him out, it would have scattered up. And then this guy, I mean, he failed, he rolled the 1 there, which, you know, nothing you can do about it. But yeah, I would have had him up there. And then this guy could have come and got it and lobbed it to him or something or whatever. Wow. Well, well, that is not technically it yet. He has to punch. He has to just dodge. He just has to dodge the tackler, doesn't he? All Matablitos has to do is dodge the tackler. Actually, he can't. He can't, he can't chain the blitzer into range and hit the ball so it's actually over it's actually over anyway oh he re-rolled into dub skulls okay now it's not over oh my god now it's not over because he re-rolled into dub skulls oh my god ending the turn would have been better than what he did <laughs> No, oh, cast. <laughs> so he could have blitzed this white and then powered him and put this guy into scoring range and then he could have just, you know, picked it up somehow and lobbed it to him, but wow. <laughs> Dub skulls! <laughs> Two dub skulls to end the game, classic. And there you go, 1-1 one, one between Mata Bolitos and Rio Bravo. And, oh, that is, that was the uh, table. I can show you the updated one in a second. But, um, yeah, that it means that Matabolitos joins Nuru. Absolute domination from Nuru. And, uh, yeah. There we go. Right, Matabolitos. Three touchdowns for, two against. Wins the tiebreaker versus Rio Bravo. Nuru wins the group. So there you go, that is Group G concluded. And um, so, congratulations for this game at the Matabolitos. Commiserations to Rio Bravo. And, well, that no, was completely wrong. Congratulations to Matabolitos. Commiserations to Rio Bravo. And also for the group, congratulations for Nuru. Group winner. Commiserations to DIV SP. And there you go, that is Group G concluded. Thanks for watching everybody, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.